If you tap R2 or L2 slightly, they should not move. If one does, you likely have a broken spring. You'll still feel tension, but it's loose enough to cause you to accidentally fire your gun in a first-person shooter, or be without precise acceleration in driving games. Here's how to replace the spring. Start by prying off this plate. You can use a small flathead screwdriver, or a prying tool, or the end of a butter knife, or your girlfriend's credit card. Start with the handles and just pry the plate upward from there. Once you get them unsnapped from the handles, you can start working your way toward the middle of the controller like this. When it's completely unsnapped, you can tilt it up at an angle like this and remove it. Next you'll need to snap off the R1 and L1 buttons. Each one has a latch on the right and a latch on the left. Pry each side of it until it pops off. And just a warning, they do fly off pretty far. Next you'll need to unscrew four screws with a small Phillips screwdriver. Any of the sizes that are on the screen right here will work. If the screws feel like they're not turning, add a drop of water to them and let them soak. Then tap on them and then try turning them. There's one screw at the end of each handle and there's one under where the R1 and L1 buttons were. Next you'll need to separate the two halves. Start with the sides. Stick your tool in there and just pry it so it starts to come apart. Then go to these two latches in the middle of the controller and pry those. A flathead screwdriver works best here. Then go to the sides and continue prying. It's going to feel tight, but keep trying and be patient. It's possible that a latch may break when you're prying it apart, but it's not a big deal. It'll still screw back together just fine. With everything completely loose, you should be able to push on the trigger buttons and push the upper casing away from the lower casing. Here's what the spring for R2 looks like normally. I'll talk about the L2 one in a minute. If the spring is broke, it's likely not even there, or there may just be a piece of it. If there is a piece there, just remove it with some tweezers. To replace it, you'll need to order one off Amazon or find a spare one from another controller. If you're really desperate, you can take the one from the L2 button. Some people suggest using one from a PS4 controller, but I've experimented with it and it doesn't seem to work. They are shaped differently, which makes it really hard to get in. But even when it is on, it doesn't seem to add that much tension. Before installing the new R2 spring, get to know the area a little bit. There's a notch for each leg and a hanger for the loop. Note the direction of the bent ends. Be sure to blow out any debris that's in there. Put bubbles of tape under the battery to keep it from falling out. Grab the replacement spring by the loop and drop it onto the hanger. If you do it just right, one leg will rest under the bottom of the button. All you have to do now is move the other leg into the other notch. The problem is there's a lot of tension in it and it's likely the entire spring will just fling off into the room. It's best to take a piece of tape and position it so that it holds the spring in place. A little square should work. Don't put tape over the leg you're trying to move. If these tips are helping you, feel free to give a thumbs up. Move the arm into the notch like so. You'll need to bring it outward a bit as you do it. This may take a lot of tries. If you have a lot of trouble, apply more tape until the leg under the button is completely blocked from moving. If you need to replace the L2 spring, things are much harder because there's stuff in the way. You can try installing the new one within the limited space, but most likely you're going to need to remove the things that are in the way. This is how you do it. Move the battery and remove the screw underneath. At the bottom of the battery compartment is a microphone. There's a little piece of ribbon on the right of it. If you push on it, it'll slide out. Just leave it hanging. You can now remove the battery compartment. Next, you'll need to remove the ribbon cables that are connected to the board. My board has four, but future revisions may vary, so be sure to check all around the board. I just pull them out with my fingers. Next, if you want, you can disconnect the battery cable right here, but it's very risky. It's tight, so you may end up pulling the whole connector off the board, and if so, you'll ruin the whole controller. You could just let the battery dangle out to the side. 
push up on the analog sticks until the board comes out and gently flip it over. Be very mindful of the wires that are still connected to it. Just don't pull them too hard. There's a good chance that this speaker came out. If so, just lay it to the side and we'll deal with it in a minute. Now you have access to the L2 spring area, and you can perform the same actions I mentioned earlier for the R2. Time to put everything back together. If the speaker fell out of place, put it in this little slot that's in between the two holes where the analog sticks were. You'll want to make sure that these two metal contacts line up with the two metal contacts that are on the board. Flip the board back over. As you're doing this, you'll want to make sure you're not crushing the ribbon cables. Just bring them up so that they wrap around the board. Then plug all the cables back in. Put the battery holder back on and screw it in. Then take the microphone and reinsert it into that slot. Then put the battery back in the way it was. Reconnect it if you disconnected it earlier. On mine, the QR code is facing upward. There's a tiny little bracket that allows you to stuff the battery cords underneath it. Next, you'll have to put the two halves back together. Make sure these motor wires are not hanging over the edge. If they are, you might slice them. Start by putting the trigger buttons through the holes, and then try to evenly snap both sides together at the top. This part's very hard, so keep trying and be patient with it. Once the upper part is snapped together, you can then work your way down the sides. Make sure the two latches right here snap together. Then reinsert the four screws. You can then put the plate back on by tilting it at an angle like this, and then just make sure it snaps into place everywhere. Then snap the L1 and R1 buttons back into place. If you think your DualSense still has a problem, this video will show you how to test it on a free testing website. I'm Kevin with Gaming the Systems and I approve this message.